Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a number 1 Mark V SMLE. This is, if I'm going to be honest, my favorite, very favorite version of the Lee Enfield because it's just really cool. This is a pattern that was tested as a trials rifle in the 1920s, and its genesis goes back to about 1911. In 1911 the British government did some testing of notch sights versus aperture sights on their rifles, and the testing board came to the conclusion that the aperture sight was the superior style, and that the next British service rifle should incorporate it. Well, the next British service rifle at that point was looking like it was going to be the pattern of 1913 Enfield rifle, which was a Mauser-style bolt action chambered for the 276 Enfield cartridge, which was quite a powerful cartridge. I have a separate video on the pattern 1913, so if you're interested, check that out. I'll have it linked at the end of this video. And that rifle had a rear aperture sight. Now, that would kind of take off on its own, own in its own direction. It would become the pattern 1914 during World War I in 303 caliber. The US would also adopt it as the model 1917 rifle in 306 caliber. But after the war, both countries pretty much dropped it. Britain kept their 1914s as kind of a reserve backup rifle, but they went back to the number one Mark III during uh, World War I and, and after. And so in the 1920s they start looking at what should we replace this service rifle with. We've gone through World War I, we've got the experience of the, of the war, and how can we take those lessons and turn them into a better service rifle? And one of the main things they were looking at doing was improving the sights. So they designed this rifle, and they went ahead and made 20,000 of them between 1922 and 1924 in two minor variations, which I will actually point out to you right now. I think these are just really cool rifles. You get that cool kind of bulldog snub nose looking front end out here, but you also get a really nice aperture sight. And I actually rather like the aperture sights myself, so this is a great fit, I think. Now I mentioned that there are two different variations of this, and there are two different versions of the sights, really. This is the second version, and it is calibrated out to 1400 yards, and it has no volley sights. Uh, by the later version here they'd realized the volley sights really just aren't that relevant, aren't that important. We don't need to try and shoot out to 3000 plus yards with these things. Like, that's just not even happening. The first versions of these rifles actually did have volley sights set on them, and they're slightly different from the number one Mark III volley sights because the sight, is, or the safety here, is a little wider to get around the new rear sight block, so the rear volley sight had to be a little kind of dog leg, a little different shape. Um, so the first batch of production number one Mark Vs had the volley sights on the side. They were also calibrated up to 1500 yards, and they had a little bit of a different style of spring. So the problem was, in initial testing they found that that spring didn't really work well, and they came to the conclusion that the volley sights just weren't necessary. And so that's when they redesigned the rifle just a little bit, got rid of the volley sights, and shortened. Uh, they, they changed the locking mechanism uh, for this slider, and they shortened the sight uh, gradations out to 1400. Uh, the physical size of the sight stayed the same, so the charging uh, charger bridge here didn't have to change. Taking a look at the markings here, we have a GR for King George, Enfield Production, 1924. You'll find these 1922, 23, and 24. And the model designation is a short Lee Enfield Mark V, Roman numeral V. The serial number is up on the front of the receiver, and there are two, two different options for them. Uh, 20,000 guns, they ran from number 1 to number 9999, and then they started over at A1 and went up to A9999. So this is from really the beginning of the second batch of 10,000. Interestingly, while they got rid of the volley sights, they did opt to keep the magazine cutoff. Now the early guns at least had a magazine cutoff without this little viewing hole in it. Um, I see conflicting information on whether or not all of them did. Some people say the 1924 guns, which this is one of, uh, did have the hole in that cutoff plate. Um, so uh, interesting to me that they kept the cutoff plate. I think that was not so much for volley fire as probably as a safety mechanism to allow the guns to be safely carried with a loaded magazine and no round in the chamber. And even if someone went and worked the bolt for some reason, if you've got the magazine cutoff engaged it's still not going to load around. Otherwise, the action is identical to a number 1 Mark III. Uh, it still has that really fast cock on closing, rear locking lug action of the Enfield. 
the rear sight here has, uh, in this position it's set for your, well basically your battle sight. And then to use it at extended range, the whole thing flips up like this, and you can then squeeze down on this little tab, and slide the sight up or down to whatever range is appropriate. Unfortunately, on this example, someone appears to have drilled out the long range sight and then threaded it for an insert, possibly because it got damaged at some point. Um, but whatever the cause, the insert isn't there. Being predictably cost conscious, uh, the British government did investigate the possibility of converting number 1 Mark III rifles to this new Mark V pattern, and they came to the conclusion that it really just wasn't cost effective. Um, they made a couple of them but only as, as kind of a trials sort of batch. So uh, all of the number 1 Mark Vs were made from scratch uh, as number 1 Mark V rifles. It's not entirely clear what happened to these after the war. Uh, some of them ended up in use by the British Home Guard, which certainly makes sense. Some of them appear to have been sold as military aid or given away as military aid because they show up after the war in a variety of places. They showed up coming out of India, um, there's a picture of one in use with a Viet Cong soldier in some, at some point during one of the Vietnam conflicts. So there's kind of this diaspora of uh, number 1 Mark V Enfields around the world after World War II. So despite having an official sealed pattern created of this rifle, it was never actually formally adopted. What ended up happening was the British military took it to the Bisley Ranges to consult with military shooters and also the British NRA, uh, competitive target shooters, long range shooters, the guys who are really expert marksmen, and get their input on how they thought this would work as a new service rifle. Really a, uh, a remarkably uh, good perspective for a military to actually consult some of those people. Well. The feedback that they got from Bisley was uh, not great. Like a lot of the target shooters didn't really like this rifle. They thought the rear sight uh, was too fragile, which by the way has some real that complaint has some merit to it. Um, my own number five ha Mark V has a bent rear sight, as have at least one or two others that I've seen. Uh, so that can happen. Uh, they also complained that the gradations on this sight weren't fine enough. You know, you you couldn't get couldn't tweak it quite right. Now, to my mind, that's something much more of concern to target shooting than it would be to actual military combat, but that was part of the feedback they got. And the Bisley shooters also wanted a heavier barrel in the gun. So the British government took all that feedback and acted on it, and they produced the number 1 Mark VI rifle, which would very quickly become the number 4, uh, which is the classic World War II style of Lee Enfield rifle that we're used to seeing. So, uh, And in doing so, by the way, they did in fact create a stronger rear sight with finer gradations and a heavier barrel. Now, if you're interested in the number 1 Mark VI, I also have a video on that, which I will also link at the end of this video, so you can check that out. If you'd like to know more about the Rock Island Auction Company, I have links in the description text below to their Instagram and YouTube channels. Uh, check those out, they have a lot of cool items there, as well as really cool items in their auctions. So uh, find their website, take a look at it, enjoy, thanks for watching.